If you know me, you know that one of my favorite players is NYXL's star flex player, Libero. Not only did he develop strategies, but his flexibility made him meta proof. No matter if it was D.Va, Genji, Hanzo, he seemingly could do it all. And later in the Overwatch League era, he added a substantial amount of hitscan heroes to his repertoire as well. Libero truly was and still is the Korean Swiss Army knife. But what people forget is that he actually spent a good portion of his formative years on D.Va. Which got me wondering, what if Libero never stopped being a tank player? We tackle that question and more on this week's Alternate Overwatch History. Now, first things first, while I did go a bit rogue on this one, don't forget if you have a suggestion for next week's episode, be sure to leave it down below, and if I like it, we'll take it and explore it, and I'll shout you out in the next video. So before Libero became this star DPS player that we know and love him to be today, he started out on a small team called UW Quicks all the way back in 2016. There, he featured a ton of different DPS picks from Farah to Hanzo, McCree, nearly anything his team needed him to play, he was able to play it and do it really, really, really well. And what was strange going back and looking at these VODs is, weirdly enough, his DPS partner at the time is former London Spitfire main support, us. Now, these two obviously would play together on future teams, but UW Quicks was kind of this ragtag team that was kind of going and, and jumping into this, this formative pool, this kind of primordial soup in Korea, as the Overwatch scene kind of was blossoming at the time. We had Nexus Cup in, in China and Overwatch Power Season and the VSL Overwatch Korea, but it wasn't until OGN came along and developed Apex, one of the biggest and most historied tournaments in Overwatch history, that Libero would carve out his place in Overwatch Legend. Overwatch Apex Challengers Season 1 was set to be the precursor, this kind of infant to the contender system in Korea. And Libero, Nuss, and some former names like Chris Hoon and Sia Player, names that would make up what we know now as Meta Athena, started out as the Meta, and they were one of the best teams, one of the best rookie teams coming out from the challenger system going into Apex Season 2. Unfortunately for Libero, the team would come in third and place just outside a super weak berth, losing to LW Red and Afrika Freaks Red. Now this didn't dissuade the meta, they actually came back even stronger in Apex Challenger Season 2, going on an undefeated 11-0 streak, only dropping 5 maps and finally grasping their first super weak promotion. There they battled MVP Infinity, Rhinos Gaming Titan, and Mighty AOD to actually make their first Overwatch Apex Season Premiere in Apex Season 2, which would end up being some of the most fantastic Overwatch. I mean, when we think of Meta Athena and Apex Season 2, after their rename, they had all these May boosts and these wonky plays and, and the, these memorable moments, including Libero's Hanzo, which is a primo, if I do say so myself. Some of the most memorable Overwatch comes from these seasons. Now, rose tinted glasses aside, Libero did play a ton during Apex Season 2, but did so on D.Va. Weirdly enough, if you go back and look at his stats on winstonslab.com, he has some of the most fantastic stat lines for a D.Va player that we've ever actually even seen. Breaching 1500 ratings, having ridiculously high fight win percentages, having high first kills, having a majority of his team's kills in general with the PTK model, having high kills per 10. It's actually mind blowing how good he was at D.Va. And with Meta Athena's eventual downfall after their peak in Apex Season 2, they really could never recapture that same, that same glory that they did. Apex Season 3 demanded more dive. They needed to readapt their style, kind of retool it. Where in Apex Season 2, they were a much more tank heavy team. Apex Season 3 just wouldn't allow them to flourish in that way. And they really kind of fell off the boat. And that's where I want to start getting a little alternate, a little weird with their eventual 7th to 8th place finish in Overwatch Apex Season 3 and their abysmal finish in Apex Season 4, what if NYXL never drafted him due to how poorly Metathena actually did, kind of devaluing his performance in some way? So to recap Libero's career for a moment, he starts on DPS in 2016 where everything is kind of just a primordial mess of nonsense, joins a new team and finds a ton of success on Flex Tank. So in this hypothetical, Libero doesn't go to NYXL due to his team's performance at Apex Season 4. He ends up staying with Meta Athena through their abysmal run through early contender seasons before getting a fateful call from somebody who you would not expect. A new Overwatch League franchise is contacting many of the members of his sister team, Meta Bellum. If it wasn't obvious at this point, I expect Libero in this scenario to replace Hotba on the 2019 Guangzhou Charge. 
If we look at who the charge originally went with in Hoppa, what are some of the comparisons we can make? Well, obviously they're both very, very good on D.Va, but can obviously move and play a lot of DPS heroes. The problem is that Hoppa really won't ever be a starter as a DPS player, whereas Libero can be in the Rawlock meta, becoming a true colorless flex DPS for this team, much in the same way that Nero is, but with the upside of being able to play flex tank at a very, very high level. And that's where I'll leave you on this one. What do you guys think might happen if Libero joins the Guangzhou charge in 2019? What might they look like come 2020? Now, obviously we haven't seen any of the Chinese teams play just yet, but let me know in the comments down below on how good you think Libero might be on the charge. While Libero's tank play was quite stellar at the time of Apex Season 2, one of the biggest narrative breakups during the beginning of the Overwatch League era had to be Saya Player and Libero splitting up. Check out this video where we explore that alternate timeline. Or explore a world where, like Libero, Mono, main tank of the NYXL, never roll swaps and becomes a main tank and stays main support in this video.